My name's Glenn English and I make model motorcycles and cars and sculptures as well. I just saw other people doing similar things and just thought I could do it a bit better. You know, like I, used to, like I used to buy model kit, kits as a kid or get them for Christmas or whatever. And there was always things on them that always stood out that weren't quite right, so I'd always have to make them better. And then I met a guy that made model cars, Javen, he was a lovely fella. He still is. And he, he, was, he was quite a help and he inspired me, so I thought, oh, but he did cars, so I thought I'd do a motorbike. So that was the first thing ever. And that's George Formby from the film No Limit. I just went down, I went down the toy shop and bought a toy soldier. And that was the man, that was the figure for the man. The motorbike I just made, yeah, just made it. I just taught me, just made it. And then I took a mould off it and cast it in metal. Then I started, when I went to the Isle of Man, I, I took it to the Isle of Man and sold loads of them. And that's what I did for, you know, mainly, mainly motorbikes is what I do. But of course I started, I did this Alfa Mayo car. And yeah, because that was my favourite car. So it's not, being creative isn't patient, it's just being creative. Yeah, I'm not really a very patient person. But um, I'm trying, I learned to be. And all the time, even when you're not working, you're thinking about how you're going to make the net, and I can't wait to get air and do it. But then once you've made it, and you've made all the patterns, you've then got to, you've done all the moulds, you've made the first one, and then you get orders. And then, it, then it's a bit of a sausage factory then, because you've got to knock them out, and you need the money, because you're skint, because you just spent four months or whatever with no money, because you're trying to make the thing. Yeah, I always start quite early, because I do wake up quite early. And like I was saying, especially in the summertime, it gets a bit hot in here, so it's hard to work, so. I, and I just work late as well. Just make, just cast all the bits up and then paint the body and then just crack on with it. Yeah. yeah. yeah and I'll, I'll carve that. That's all carved. But you, you know, I just break up in sections. I'll make one bit first and then I'll add that bit on the side. And if I've got the real engineer, I can just look at it and it, I'll, just, I'll just get that right. It will be, and it, it will be right. So you see, that's how they used to do it in the old days. Wasn't it? That was how it was. Old school, wasn't it? You know, 50 years ago, you'd have, you'd have, you know, pattern makers would be making that. So that's, yeah, that's a Vincent engine, that is. What will be when it's finished. I've looked into 3D printing and it is just so time consuming. I can, I can make things quicker by hand and I can get something 3D printed. My favourite tool, I keep losing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I stole it actually. That. That's a little special a spatula. I was doing some sculpting for my cousin Michael at the Copperworks because we do. He does. I do some work for him now and again. We do bronze sculptures, and I was doing a coat of arms for him and it was for a military hospital. And I didn't have many sculpting tools at the time. He said, oh, "I've got a box here." That. that it's just perfect. Just the way you know. What I mean, the amount of the amount of springness in it when you when you you know, it's like a palette knife. I think just been modified. So I said, "Well, I'm sorry, but you're not having that back." You have to lace the wheels, but yeah, so then you've got to take all the moulds, and so it's all time consuming. And um, then once it's done, I can do them. It takes me about four, this takes me about four weeks, but that's because I'm too easily distracted. Fixing old motorbikes that takes a lot, that, that, that takes a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, I've never had anybody disappointed, so that's always always nice. But I, I've, yeah, the last time I made an AGS 7, I was a couple of months back, and I didn't want to give it to the customer, and I've never done that. I haven't got a single one of my own models. Man, it's sad, isn't it, really? But uh, they say like, well, there's a waiting list, isn't there? If people want one, you just you just sell it. So I've never I've never had one. Ten years, I suppose. Not made any armour. And it was a girl that we worked with on King Arthur. But she was really good, Emma. Yeah, so I sort of kept in touch with her, really. She's always kept worked in the film industry ever since, in costume. So she just said, oh, there's a... Do you want to make some armour for this production, you know, production magic flute? They've contacted me, then they're trying to find someone to make it. Cut the pattern out. And then you beat the rough, sh like you, you sort of dish it into a tree trunk with a shallow, you know, different varying depths. Just beat it out. That's it. And just use your eye, look at it, bend that bit over your knee. I struggled to find something to do. And then I came down to Cornwall to come down there and again. And, and then, then that led on to meet, meet, just meet people, didn't you? When you start doing stuff, you just meet people and then that inspires you to just be more creative and do other stuff. And that's basically how it happened. So then I never went back to Essex because I had nothing to go back to. Think outside the box, because I'm not a technical man at all. And people think you've got to be technical and you've got to be an engineer and I'm not anything at them things. I'm no good at maths, but I've just got a feel for things. And I just like, I'm just creative and I do things my way.